My name is Say Alex, the Chartered Farmer from Hobax Chickens. This is our second episode, another exciting Roadrunner episode. Today we're focusing on three really amazing breeds. So if you're thinking of getting into Roadrunner farming, stay tuned because today we're talking about three exciting breeds, the Buffalo Pinkton, the Light Sussex and the Colombian Light Drama. The Buffalo Pinkton breed is a dual purpose breed, meaning that you can use it for eggs and you can use it for meat purposes as well. So those of us that like uh, you know, free range chicken eggs, that, that like free range chicken meat, then the Buffalo Pinkton is your go-to breed. It's one of the really amazing uh, breeds under the Oppington uh, breed of chickens. So these chickens, they give you very good sizes. So the roosters can go above five cages if really kept well and if they are coming from a true bloodline. So they'll give you around five cages for the roosters and the hens weigh plus three cages. So in a family home of uh, five people, six people, you know, when you slaughter the rooster, you'll be able to feed the family two, three times um, for meals. So it's really an amazing breed uh, that you must have in your home. In terms of disease resistance, it's a fairly good uh, a breed in terms of resisting diseases. We have had it for a long time here. We've never had challenges in terms of diseases. So as long as you follow your vaccination program, you observe your biosecurity and make sure that um, you don't allow people into the fowl run. You make sure that people wash their feet when they come to the fowl runs and stuff like that. As long as your biosecurity is um, uh, top notch, then you're guaranteed that the chickens will be very, very good. You know, just like any other animal, um, buffalo pingtons also get affected by disease but as long as you treat them early and separate the sick chickens from the rest of the chickens then you are likely to get away with it um, so as a chicken farmer you need to also make sure that in your stock of medicines and vaccines you've got all the vaccines that cover the different diseases so for example the most common ones you've got your Newcastle you've got your Coriza others call it your Ziso You've got your coccidiosis, where your chickens will be dropping droppings that have blood in them. Uh, you also have one that sounds like a flu. So there are common diseases that you find in chickens. But all these come mostly because of bad hygiene. So the fowl runs need to be kept very clean. They need to be um, cleaned regularly to make sure that there isn't diseases that man you manufacture in there. You also need to make sure that you disinfect them regularly. Um, so that you also just keep the hygiene very very high but otherwise as long as you observe these high hygiene uh, rules then you're guaranteed that your chicken will do very very well so it's really an amazing breed buffalo pinton and it's a common chicken here in zimbabwe a lot of people breed it but the big difference that you're going to find is that um, as long as your chicken is not pure then it is likely to run into problems in terms of disease resistance it will go down you see gene mutation, it will go down. So it is very important that you try and make sure that if you decide to rear the above Oppington, then you get the pure bloodline. And the pure bloodline, you see it by the shape of the chicken. Uh, you look at the comb of the chicken, you look at the feet, it's got white feet. Um, so those are some of the features that you really have to consider when you are looking at the above Oppington and choosing the parent stock. And again, when you decide to keep these chickens, my recommendation to you, don't just buy the chicks, go and see uh, the parent stock, see how they are being kept, uh, see the quality, see the genetics, to satisfy yourself that what you're getting is really the true breed. And as long as you have the uh, true breed, you are definitely guaranteed that your chickens will perform as expected uh, by the standard of poultry in terms of the weights that you get, in terms of the size of the chicks, in terms of the eggs that you pick up in, a, uh, in the fowl run. So for example, with the buff Oppington, when you have 10 hens, for example, you should be able to pick on average six to seven eggs a day. One of the problems that we have with many farmers is that of inbreeding. Some people understand what inbreeding is and some people totally don't understand. So inbreeding is a situation where you breed uh, some chicks from your parent stock, and then you allow the parents to meet with the offsprings. When you do that, you're going to mutate the genes. In other words, the genetics from those chickens will go down. That's where you start seeing chickens that don't really represent the true breed of that particular breed. So to avoid you know, reducing the genetics, 
uh, mutating the genetics. What you need to do as a farmer is to try and avoid inbreeding. So when you pick your eggs from a fowl run and go and hatch them, you need to make sure that those chicks that you pick from that batch will never be allowed to mate with their parents. Because when you do that, the offspring that you produce from there will definitely be far from the true genetics of that particular breed. So it is okay for uh, chicks, roosters and hens etched from the same batch to be allowed to mate. That is perfectly okay. What you must not do is to allow the offsprings to meet with their parents. That is what we call inbreeding and that will reduce the quality and the genetics of that breed and you start seeing gene mutations happening in your uh, chickens. And this is something that is really common around this country. A lot of people allow that to happen. But by doing that, you are reducing the quality of your chickens, you are reducing the size of your chickens, and also the true value and the true quality of that breed will keep going down. So try and avoid doing inbreeding as much as you can. So separate your parents and their offsprings. That way you continue to maintain the quality of that particular bloodline. It is also equally important for you to try and source roosters also from a different bloodline if you want to breed. So let's say for example, if you, bear, if you hatch 50 chicks from your chickens, uh, instead of using the same roosters from the same batch, it is perfectly okay to do so. But the preferable outcome is for you to try and source another rooster from a different bloodline altogether, such that you try and maintain that quality uh, going forward. So it is better to use a foreign rooster to breed than to use the same breed in as much as it's okay to do that but you're always better off getting another different uh, rooster from a different bloodline something that we do here at Orbox. we always make sure that we source other roosters that we use to breed with our hands to try and keep the genetics very very high to try and keep the breeds as pure as as possible because it is only pure breeds that give you true value that give you true business sense even when you decide to breed and sell chicks if they are really pure breeds, then definitely you will fetch good prices. It will increase your profitability and it becomes viable for you as a farmer. So stay away from doing chickens casually and allowing them to inbreed. Try and observe strict breeding rules by not allowing inbreeding, by also introducing new bloodlines into your flocks to make sure that you keep them um, as close as possible to the original breed. One of my top two favorite breeds here is the Colombian Light Brahma. I call it the Rambo of chickens. It's the really go-to breed should you want to rear chickens for meat. And it's such a beautiful bird to have also. For example, if you're just walking around your premise or your home, it really beautifies the home. It's such a large uh, chicken. If really kept well, true to its bloodline, the roosters can weigh over five to six cages and the hens will be near four kgs if really kept well, between three and four kgs. A really good chicken and normally this is kept for meat purposes. The Colombian Light Brahma is not a good egg layer. It will not give you a lot of eggs uh, on average per week or per year. So if you have around 10 hens, for example, you pick around five, plus or minus five eggs per day. So it's not really your go to breed should you want to uh, um, breed for eggs. But however, should you want to breed for meat, then this is really the go to breed. It goes really big and it's such a beautiful chicken just to look at it. You know, it's an amazing breed. I love it, it's one of my best. And compared to other breeds, it's also equally resistant to diseases. Um, we've never had a challenge with the Colombian Light Brahma. The disease resistance is good. Um, and the meat is very tender when you slaughter it. It's not as hard as our you know, rural roadrunner chicken. The meat is quite tender and nice. Not as tender or soft as your broiler, but it's really delicious when you cook it very well. So it's, it's such a nice uh, meat breed to have at home. And it's not a difficult chicken to breed. Uh, it's not an aggressive breed. It's very docile, so it's good with kids. If you have got young kids at home, they will be able to play with the chickens without uh, you know, any fear that the chicken will attack uh, the kids. They will grow to like the chickens because they're very docile, playful, love kids 
and they will grow together and your children will also generate interest in terms of keeping chickens if they you know grow together with this breed so it's such an amazing uh, beautiful docile breed uh, that i would recommend any farmer out there to to have at home it will be enough for when you have gatherings and you slaughter one rooster you're guaranteed that uh, you'll have a lot of meat to feed the entire household uh, plus one day even uh, if the household is not so big so it's really that good and um, I like it uh, compared to other Brahmas or other breeds that uh, you may know like your black ostrolope um, in terms of size this breed is larger in size and though it lays less eggs than your black ostrolope but its size is really good and big and if you are somebody who likes size then this is really your go-to breed the breed is very easy to keep or to breed uh, if you leave your eggs in the nest boxes, uh, it's a broody chicken, meaning if you let them in there. Alternatively, you can take the eggs to a hatchery and you can be able to breed more if you do that. So if you don't allow the hens to be broody and take the eggs away to a hatchery, then um, you'll be able to breed more numbers and the, the hens will not stop laying, they will continue to lay. However, my observation with the breed is that during the winter season, uh, they drop a bit in terms of their laying and then once we start getting out of the winter season you start seeing the number of eggs increasing as well so you may want to um, give your chickens a rest if you want to breed during the winter allow them to uh, you know stop laying and concentrate on increasing in size and then come August September we are back into the breeding season and you start picking uh, your good number of eggs daily from the chickens. Then come the December to March period, we call it the moulting season. This is the season where the breeds will drop their feathers and then they start growing new feathers. And during this period also you will find that the number of eggs that they lay are a bit low during that three month moulting period. As soon as they are done with uh, moulting, the chickens will look really beautiful because of the new feathers that would have grown and from that point onwards they will also start laying eggs again and you'll be able to start picking some really good number of eggs as uh, soon as the moulting season is over and the chickens will be looking amazing the nice feathers will come out really well into the winter season again and this cycle repeats itself over and over again uh, in terms of how long you can keep this chicken for it can give you five to seven years and during this period you'll be able to really pick a good number of eggs um, as well as be able to slaughter enough for the household, enough for you to sell uh, for meat purposes. And you can be able to increase your numbers by continuously breeding uh, more and more, either through allowing them to, uh, to be broody uh, or kurarira mazayazo, or you can decide to take the eggs to the hatchery. But during that five year period, your numbers could easily uh, outgrow your capacity that you may have because it's such an amazing breed. I don't know whether you'd slaughter this one. Personally, I struggle to slaughter it because it's really so beautiful, a nice breed, a must have. One of my top two favorites here at Hobax. I love the breed. If you have other uh, Brahma breeds in your household or at your poultry farm, it is equally okay should you decide to cross these together. So for example, the Colombian light Brahma, you can cross it with the gold partridge Brahma. You can cross it with uh, the silver partridge Brahma or even the buff blue uh, Brahma, any other Brahma type, you can cross them. And this will maintain the size of the breed, it will maintain good size for meat purposes. But however, should you then decide to want to sell these chickens as a breeder, it is difficult because in terms of value, you will not be able to get the same price that you'd get had you sold your Colombian light Brahma as a pure breed. So when you cross your chickens, definitely you, the value goes down so it means the profit that you make will also then go down. But if you're breeding for meat purposes, then you may not see this problem because you sell your chickens at about 14 to 16 weeks. And at that point, it doesn't matter whether it's a pure breed or a cross breed, you will still be able to fetch the same value. And it is actually quite a profitable thing to do because for you to keep this chicken up to around 14 to 16 weeks, it will cost you around $4 per bed. And the average price for a roadrunner chicken, depending on the size, is between eight to ten dollars. Some sell for around seven dollars, which is still very profitable. So you can be able to achieve this profitability uh, even if you cross the breed and not keep the Colombian light Brahma as a pure breed. It is perfectly okay. And if you mix them with other Brahma chickens, they still 
um, stay together nicely. They are all very docile. So there's not really that much fighting that occurs amongst the roosters and like other breeds that are quite aggressive. So they will cohabit and stay together very, very well. And as long as they get used to each other, you will not see uh, any problem at all. So that's something that you can also do if you want to maintain high sizes or big sizes rather uh, for meat purposes. The Light Sussex is a jewel breed. In other words, you can keep it for eggs purposes or you can keep it for meat purposes. The roosters for this breed um, grow equally large in size. They'll give you around plus or minus four cages in size, depending on how pure your chicken is. The hens will also give you around plus or minus three cages in weight, which is a really good weight, uh, even should you want to slaughter the hens for meat purposes. The beauty about the light Sussex, which I've experienced over the years we have kept it, is that even during winter, compared to other breeds like your Brahmas, um, which slow down in terms of laying during winter, the light Sussex has continued to lay throughout the winter season, uh, into the summer, they even pick more. Uh, even during the summer, the rain season, uh, you still be able to really pick a good number of eggs. On average, we pick eight, or so eggs per day out of 10 hens. So that's quite a good laying percentage of, of plus or minus 80% uh, every single day. So if you want to breed an easy chicken for eggs, then this is your go-to breed because it's not hard to um, keep the light Sussex because you can even let it free range in your uh, backyard, in your homestead, and you will not find any problems with this breed uh, because it can forage on anything within your yard or your home without any problem. So this will also help you to supplement the feed. It is also such a good chicken in terms of disease resistance. Um, as long as you vaccinate it properly and you follow a correct vaccination uh, program, then you are guaranteed of not really having a lot of problems with um, the light Sussex because it's got a very good disease tolerance. And it also responds quite well to um, vaccines when you give them uh, vaccines, say they are uh, due for a vaccine and you vaccinate them, or when you treat them when they are sick, you will find that the chickens quickly recover as well compared to other breeds that have a less tolerance to diseases. And in terms of climate, uh, the light Sussex also adjust very well to the Zimbabwean environment. So whether you are in the hot areas or in the cold areas of the country, the light Sussex easily and quickly adjusts to that environment. So you can be able to breed this in any part of this country. It's such a good chicken in that. And they also give you uh, very nice brown eggs, medium in size, uh, which are very good for hatching purposes or uh, for selling as eggs you do want to be an egg breeder. Um, the light Sussex also can go broody, in other words you can leave it to um, uh, you know, lie on its eggs so that you can breed some chicks out of it and or you can decide to pick the eggs and take them to the hatchery. There are some benefits of taking your eggs to the hatchery uh, compared to letting the chickens go broody. You will find that if you take your eggs to the hatchery the hens normally continue laying, uh, so it means that you'll be able to pick more eggs and you'll be able to breed more chicks. Compared to when you leave them to go broody, it means that after a month or so of laying, they will go uh, and become broody and they'll stop laying. So for 21 or so days, uh, the hen will be broody, uh, sitting on the eggs, and then once the eggs hatch, uh, you'll find that it will then go for a couple of weeks of uh, keeping the chicks before it goes back to laying again. So your growth will be a bit reduced should you decide to let your chickens uh, go broody instead of taking the eggs to the hatchery. So if you are looking at doing numbers, if you are looking at producing more in terms of your eggs, then you don't want to let the chickens go broody because then this stops the hen from laying and you will not be able to pick any more eggs from there. So it means you have to wait for another two months or so or three months before the cycle starts all over again. So it is better for you to pick the eggs, take them to a hatchery, and then you'll be able to get more chicks from there. However, if you don't have your own incubator, then there are some disadvantages that come along with taking eggs to uh, people's hatcheries. Depending on 
the ethical practices of the hatchery that you go to. Sometimes you give them your eggs, for example, light Sussex, and when you go to collect the chicks, you get a different breed altogether because your eggs or your chicks have been mixed with other breeds that you don't have. Uh, so that's another problem uh, with giving eggs to the hatchery. And some of the hatcheries don't have backup uh, power. So if power goes, you may find that out of a batch of 30 eggs, you may find one or two chicks coming out. Again, it's a big loss for the farmer. Uh, or sometimes um, the hatcheries don't have really good machines that produce good hatch results. So as a result, you may then end up not getting good number of chicks from the hatchery. Compared to when you let the hen uh, go broody, the hens normally do very well when they broody because they uh, give you over 80% uh, hatch rate uh, or they almost hatch all the fetal eggs that they'll be sitting on. So that's the disadvantage of taking your eggs to the hatchery. So depending on how good, how professional, how ethical um, that hatchery is, sometimes the results are disastrous. So you may need to weigh your options if you are considering taking your eggs to a hatchery. But otherwise, it is such a good uh, breed to have, a good tolerance, and you can keep it basically anywhere in this country. So today we spoke about three breeds, Buff Orpington, which is a jewel breed uh, that you can keep for eggs and meat purposes. We also spoke about the Colombian Light Brahma, my favorite, the Rambo of chickens. Um, this breed is good for uh, meat purposes. It doesn't give you a lot of eggs. We also spoke about the Light Sussex, again, another jewel breed, which is smaller compared to the Buff Orpington, but it will give you a lot of eggs. Uh, so it's been exciting. It's good to have you. In our future exciting episodes, we'll be talking about nutrition. We will talk about how you can keep these free-range chickens in your backyard, at your farm, in your homestead, and be able to feed them using the traditional methods that are cheaper and would result in you making more profit. So we are not saying cut off completely feed from the feed manufacturers, but these organic methods and traditional ways of keeping the chickens will help to increase your profitability. It will also help you to make sure that the meat that you produce out of these chickens is really uh, nice in terms of its test. It will test very, very good if you also feed your chickens using the traditional methods. Uh, so we'll talk about these in our future exciting epi episodes. So keep watching. Should you want to get in touch with me, you can contact me on 0772-511-419 or on my social media platform, on Twitter, Ngoni Alex Robbins, on LinkedIn, Ngoni Alex Robbins, on Facebook, you can find us as Hobax Farm. So thank you so much for watching this episode. My name is Say Alex, the Chartered Farmer from Hobox Chickens. We'll talk about more breeds in the future episodes. Agriculture is a cool profession and besides, you can't live without a farmer. Everybody needs a farmer at least three times a day. That's how important farmers are. This is my first time at Kuyapa Farm. Uh, farm. But what agriculture, what I saw about agriculture, so I know that this is what is moon are willing, willing, a person who's not lazy. Munari are energy are energy and energy are nyanya steric. That's what you need in agriculture. Don't put him on no and no go people you know nowadays boys like you know the black uh, dream garden, who dare coco dream garden. Now, but what they really don't know is that in a garden, no nowadays agriculture no chinu chaganya kosisa steric in in our living times these days because jobs are not easy. Yeah, and actually, there are principles here. Do we got to organize this event? Or to come and go about it? You know, we want to zoom in, zoom out. We want to know Um, about agriculture as a profession. Agriculture has got an academic side. So uh, we've got the pathologists and uh, so scientists. Uh, it's also equally challenging, which is a good thing. So it also covers both sides. Cause there are some people who are not academically gifted, but then they're able to do hands-on um, practicals like agriculture so they can earn a living from that. Uh, this was an agricultural tour and I look forward to another one because this was very exciting uh, learning about pigs and it needs passion. One should have passion with this agriculture. Agriculture is a cool profession and besides you can't live without a farmer.